Welcome. In this presentation, we will be demonstrating the lateral lumbar interbody fusion technique with the Timberline Lateral Fusion System. The Timberline Lateral Fusion System includes a broad selection of peak intervertebral spacers, ranging in widths, lengths, heights, lordotic and coronal angles. The highlight of the Timberline Lateral Fusion System is the modular three-blade radiolucent retractor system that combines an infinite resolution retraction mechanism with durable aluminum construction. Combined with a unique fiber optic light source, this system enables exceptional visualization and versatility. Timberline also comes with a generous assortment of access and disc preparation instruments to simplify and streamline the lateral fusion procedure. The patient is placed on a breakable C-arm compatible surgical table in the lateral decubitus position such that the patient's greater trochanter is directly over the break in the table. Use padding for key prominent features and support the patient's arms. If the surgeon has elected to use neuromonitoring, the technician should place appropriate electrodes prior to securing the patient to the table. The articulating arm table clamp is placed on the bed rail prior to taping the patient. Secure the patient to the table using 3-inch silk tape. Tape should be placed directly on the skin to prevent inadvertent movement of the patient during surgery. A dressing adhesive is recommended to aid with adhesion to the skin. Tape is placed over the torso, hip, and legs as shown. Lowering the patient's legs will help to create more space between the ribs and the pelvis for accessing the lumbar spine via the lateral approach. AP and lateral fluoroscopy should be used to confirm correct positioning. In the AP view, the spinous process should appear in the midline of the vertebral body, with the pedicles equidistant from the spinous process. The end plates should appear to be linear. Adjust the C-arm position as needed for each operative level. In the lateral view, the end plates and posterior cortex should appear to be linear, and the pedicles should be superimposed. Adjust the table as needed to achieve true AP and lateral imaging when the C-arm is in the 0 and 90 degree position. Using a K-wire and lateral fluoroscopy, identify the surgical entry point. The surgeon should target midline to the posterior third of the disc space of the level that will be fused. A transverse incision is made through the skin and subcutaneous fat. Use blunt dissection through the oblique muscles and transversalis fascia to enter the retroperitoneal space. Sweep a finger anteriorly to clear away retroperitoneal fat and to ensure the peritoneum is situated anteriorly. Palpate to locate the transverse process and the psoas muscle. If neural monitoring will be employed, the scrub technician will load each dilator with a monopolar stimulator probe. Guide the initial dilator down to the psoas muscle while protecting the peritoneum. Carefully advance the initial dilator through the psoas muscle until it rests on the disc of the level to be fused. A rotating motion with downward pressure will help to ensure the dilator adequately passes through the psoas muscle. The surgeon may elect to stimulate the probe attached to the dilator to confirm good positioning of the dilator relative to nearby nerve roots. Confirm correct positioning of the dilator using lateral fluoroscopy. Check the depth of the dilator by reading the markings on the dilator at the level of the skin. Add 10 millimeters to this depth and have the scrub technician attach the correct blades to the retractor body. Insert a K-wire through the initial dilator into the disc space to hold the dilator's position. The K-wire should be placed approximately halfway across the disc space. Confirm with AP fluoroscopy. Introduce the second dilator. Rotate the dilator while applying downward pressure to help clear muscle tissue from underneath the dilator. The surgeon has the option of stimulating the probe attached to the second dilator to check for nearby nerve roots. Advance the retractor over the second dilator. Employ a rotating motion with downward pressure until the blades are seated on the disc space. Confirm using AP fluoroscopy. Orient the retractor such that it is in line with the disc space and parallel to the floor. While maintaining downward pressure on the retractor, attach the articulating arm. Attachment to the center arm will allow for anterior retraction, while attachment to the retractor body will allow for posterior retraction. 
Confirm that the retractor is positioned such that the view on the lateral x-ray is looking directly down the retractor blades to the spine. Adjust the angle of the retractor as necessary. Confirm the AP position of the retractor is appropriate. Open the retractor blades by rotating the cranial caudal handle counterclockwise. Open the blades just far enough to expose the end plates of the vertebral bodies. Retract anteriorly or posteriorly as needed by rotating the posterior handle counterclockwise. Either of the cephalad caudal blades may be flared outward as needed by using the posterior handle to advance the towing screw clockwise. Attach the fiber optic light source to the cephalad caudal blades. Use care to ensure the clips are seated properly. The surgeon has the option of using additional anterior retraction by inserting a Scoville-style retractor such that the tip is resting against the disc space. Attach the anterior bar mechanism to secure the Scoville retractor. The surgeon may check for neurovascular structures in the working space with the ball-tipped probe. Then, advance the posterior shim into the disc space while using AP fluoroscopy. Ensure there is adequate exposure by inserting a box cutter or implant trial into the working space. Confirm with lateral fluoroscopy. Sweep any residual tissue behind the retractor blades such that the disc annulus is visible. Incise the annulus along the end plates approximately the width of the implant. Use a cob elevator to separate the disc material from the end plates and to release the contralateral annulus. Always use care not to compromise the integrity of the end plates. Remove as much disc material as possible. Lanx provides a generous assortment of rongeurs, curettes, and box osteotomes to complete the discectomy. Take care not to disrupt the ALL. Prepare the end plates for fusion using the trial rasps, curettes, and scrapers. Select the appropriate width implant trial. Initiate implant trialing with the 8mm tall implant trial. Impact the trial into position such that the distal tip of the trial reaches the contralateral edge of the disc space. Use AP fluoroscopy to ensure good positioning. Increase in height until the appropriate trial is reached. Use caution not to over-distract the disc space. Determine the correct implant length by selecting the sizing window that best aligns with the proximal edge of the vertebral body. The three sizing windows closest to the instrument shaft correspond to lengths of 40, 50, and 60 millimeters. Confirm the trial is in a good AP position using lateral fluoroscopy. The target implant position is centered between the middle and anterior third of the disc space. Pack the implant with an appropriate graft material. Impact the implant into the disc space. Use AP fluoroscopy to confirm that the center implant marker aligns with the spinous process. The implant should span the width of the vertebral body. Remove the implant inserter and confirm the implant is in a good AP position using lateral fluoroscopy. Retract the posterior shim from the disc space. Return the retractor to the closed position. Disconnect the articulating arm from the retractor. Slowly remove the retractor from the wound while watching closely for excess bleeding or other abnormalities. Use standard closure techniques. The Timberline Lateral Fusion System is indicated for use with supplemental fixation, such as the Aspen Spinous Process Fixation Device or the Telluride Minimally Invasive Pedicle Screw System. Reposition the patient as necessary to implant the preferred supplemental fixation. If you have questions about the Timberline System, please contact Lanks at 303-443-7500 or email us at info at